Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that ran down to the skirts of his garment. And as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended down Mount Zion, it is there where the Lord commanded the blessings of life forevermore. Amen? Amen. Truly, I do give honor to God who is the head of my life. Thank you for cutting my life, saving me, and giving me mind to serve him. I do give honor to Pastor Pat and his wife at their absence, as well as to Pastor Castro and his wife and to all the pastors, each and every one of you today. We're just so thankful to be in the house of God one more time, that we're able to come and fellowship together in unity. Amen? Amen. Today, uh, our theme is going to be the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Our text will be found in Romans chapter 14, verses 17 through 19. Then we'll be skipping over to Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. And we conclude in Luke chapter 12, verses 32. So starting over in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says this, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us, therefore, follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Luke chapter 17, Luke 17, verses 20 and 21 says this, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Key. Last verse, Luke 12 and 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. I bring you greetings from Greater Evangelist Temple Church of God in Christ. I am the senior pastor there, been pastoring for eight years. My father pastored there for 47 years. I was born and raised here in Casa Grande. This is my home. I love my home. And majority of you probably in the house, I would say, moved here from somewhere else. <laughs> if you are native of Arizona, I'm going to do this. If you're native of Arizona, raise your hand. Uh, exactly. Thank you to those that are born uh, in the Arizona area. Everybody else, see, everyone else have moved here from somewhere else. But I like to tell people, especially when they come over to the church, I say, now the Lord bless you to come here in the middle of the desert. (laughs) There's a reason why he blessed you to come here. One thing about the desert is if you find a plant in the desert, what does the roots do? The roots trying to sink down deeper and deeper to find water. Are you sinking your roots, roots deeper and deeper here in the desert to grow spiritually? The scripture says, believe on me, as the scripture have said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So he wants that life service in you. We make up the body of Christ, born again, baptized believers. God bless you, Pastor Winchester and Sister Peggy. Good to see you. You all surprised me. But but we... (laughs) He, he blesses us. Watch this. We come here and you have moved here for a reason and a purpose. God just don't haphazardly do things. So while you're here in the desert, sink your roots into Jesus Christ and him crucified that you can grow and be all that God has called you to be for the kingdom. Remember over Revelations, John the Revelator says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming. The old heaven and the old earth has been done away with. You all, 
The Bible lets us know we are pilgrim strangers passing through this barren land. This is not our home, although we love it. This is not it for us. God has something greater and better for us. And I'm not talking to you when you get to heaven. It's going to be grand, but I'm talking about even now in your life. That you can make an imprint on somebody else. That you can be so impactful on someone else. Because, see, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know you're not just saved just for yourself. What about your children, your family members, your loved ones? So let that light shine, for the kingdom is within you. Now, let's start with the question. What do you need to have a kingdom? Number one, you need a king. God, okay, you need a king, you need a ruler. Number two, you need people or subjects. And then number three, you need a realm or a place. Jesus himself often talked about the kingdom of God. The kingdom is mentioned over 70 times in the New Testament. God's kingdom has come to earth because Jesus Christ came, died, came to earth and died. You not know when Jesus came, it says he put off his heavenly robe and came in the, the manner and the likeness of man to redeem man from sin. To pave a way. God already knew man was going to mess up in the Garden of Eden. That was no shock or surprise to God. He knew that. However, you know, if you go back to Genesis, you see where he made man. And it says that he made man in his own image and his likeness. Now, when he made man, he made him of the dust of the ground. But the, the dust of the ground was lifeless until God himself breathed raha, the breath into him. And it says, and the body became a living soul. Now, Adam and Eve, they would talk to God in the cool of the day. They had relationship. What does God want from us? Relationship. He even teaches us, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. He's teaching his own principle about him. The father, the son, and the spirit are one. That's not three gods. That's one. They're one. In the beginning was the word, Genesis. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. John over in the New Testament, in the beginning was the word. And the word, y'all see what's going on? The word was God. Watch this. And then it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt right among them. That's Jesus. Became flesh and dwelt right among. Why? To experience. And, the, and also, he came to save us from sin, a penalty that we could do ourselves. So that's what Jesus came. He came to give us the kingdom of heaven. Y'all remember Jesus said, the only thing you hear me say is what I heard my father say. The only thing that you'll see me do is what I've seen my father do. He came. Y'all remember there's a song. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, our debts he paid. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Y'all know that one, right? Think about that. <laughs> Think about it. He came all the way down to show us the way. And he knew that we were going to be lost and we'd look and lose. In other words, we like to see things before it happened. But he says, I don't want you to be a looky lose. I want you to trust and believe me by faith. By faith, before it happens, believe by faith. And when you do that, you're walking as a kingdom child. So he came to reveal to us. Now, our identity in Christ Jesus. I am a child of the king. First Peter 2 and 9 says this. I am of a royal priesthood. I am chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are peculiar people, and we should show forth the praises to our king, the one who has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. When he saved us, we have a new outlook on our life, a new outlook on ourselves, on how we see ourselves. And regardless, as, the, as Sister Susan said, regardless of what others may think about you, know this, that you are a child of the king. And when God made you, he didn't make no junk. For he says himself in the beginning, he says that after he created everything, he said it all is good. 
So we good. Watch this. But sin is bad. Sin's in the land. That's why it says men ought to always pray and not faint. Right? So the kingdom of God, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. God is surrounded by a heavenly host who serve him. From his throne, God watches over the whole earth. His right to be king rests upon the fact that he is creator of the heaven and the earth. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. For in his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountains peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it the entire universe, the world and the world beyond. For he's supreme being. But do we treat him as a supreme being? Is he really all that? Because sometimes the way we live, we say he's not. Because we choose, well, this is how I see it. This is how I'm going to do it. I just don't sit with, are, are y'all, there don't be those ones that pull, pull a scripture out. You know, when it's just for you, it's going to work for you. So you're going to pull that one scripture out. You don't want the scripture before it or the scripture after it because it won't go right. <laughs> Have you found yourself doing that? Oh, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell her. Watch this. But if the kingdom of God is in you, it's going to cause you to walk in love. Not hatred, not bitterness. It's going to cause unity. Why is it that we can't get along sometimes even in the church? Why is it there are cliques? I mean, I'm, no, I'm not just talking about Great Avengers Temple. That's everywhere, y'all. That's everywhere. You know, you only invite so-and-so over your house. You don't want to invite the, this family over to your house, but you want that family to come to your house. You, we pick and choose. Is that how God is? Something to think about. So if that's you, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Just change your thought process of how you, because see, what happens is we ourselves segregate ourselves in our own mind. Now, let me tell you this. If you don't know it by now, when you get to heaven, it ain't segregated. So, so if you ain't loving down here, don't expect to go there. There's only two places you can go. Come on, somebody. We got to break down the walls of segregation, the walls in our own minds that stop us from being all that God wants us to be. I want you to be a child of me. What is man that is so mindful of him? He wants us to come to him, ask for forgiveness, and then he turns around and throws our sin into a sea of forgetfulness. In other words, you know how some of y'all is? Don't say nothing. You bring it back to it. I remember when you said something to me and I didn't like it. You know, and you remember that, you know, okay, wives, y'all know how sometimes your husband may have done, okay, okay y'all got that one, may have done something. They, they don't forget, they don't forget. The women do not forget. They will bring it to your undivided attention. You remember 15 years ago. Amen. Thank you, sir. And, and the Bible say the truth will set you free. You, hey, I just learned, I just learned to say, you're right, babe, you're right. <laughs> Woo! You, you're right. I'm, I'm going to do better. You know what happens then? she be saying, honey, you're right. I'm just going to do better. I say, okay, honey, let's do better together. <laughs> you, we got to work this thing out. All right, so for the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods, as I said, right? So I place no value on anything I have or, or may possess. I'm not going to sit and talk to you about city council. I'm not going to talk to you about the NFL. I'm talking about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because that other stuff, that, that's nothing. That, that's what I've done, but that's not who I am. I'm a child of the king, and I want to tell you about kingdom business. I need to understand the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. I need to know that Bible. I need to study that Bible. I need to read that Bible. I need to tell others about that Bible and what's in there. But if I'm not reading it, how can I tell somebody? You got to know yourself. Jesus lived a divine life here on earth in which we should do the same and live a divine life while we are here on this earth. God must reign in our lives now if we are to enter the kingdom tomorrow. Come on, somebody. He needs to be in now. The kingdom of God that Jesus spoke of is that moment, that place where the people are in peace, righteousness, joy, and justice of God. 
We are to promote righteousness and peace and joy in our everyday life. We ought to let Cassie Grant have it. Come on, somebody. The world hates change, but it is change that brings about progress. What are you doing to help change? Or what are you doing to stop the progress? What we do, the Bible says, Paul, uh, he says, uh, I must decrease, he must increase. The more he increases in my life, it causes me to treat you right at Walmart, <laughs> at Safeway. You, you know what I'm saying? When, when it's in you, only thing you can give is what you got. You can't give nothing else. But if you ain't been studying, you ain't been reading your word, and you've been re watching Red Fox all day, <laughs> you'll be cussing up a storm, right? That's why you got to be careful. Uh, they, this is a commercial. I say these commercial breaks, a sidebar. You know, we used to sing a song as little kids. Little eyes, be careful what you see. Do the eyes be careful what you see? Okay. And then do the ears be careful what you hear? Now think about that. If we're telling the kids that we're adults, shouldn't we be doing it too? No, you used to tell your kids to do it and you ain't doing it. In other words, we got to be careful what we put in our eye gate and our ear gate because it affects our heart gate. That that comes in is going to come out. And if the kingdom is in, the kingdom is coming out. And we might as well get prepared for it. If y'all go back over to Revelations and it talks about heaven and what's going on, John the Revelator, y'all know, some of y'all are afraid to read Revelations because of all the different dragons and <laughs> white horse, red horse, black horse, trying to figure out what horse is what. <laughs> right? Right? But, 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 but I know, I know, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Because a lot of people don't want to go there. Right? But listen, this is what it says over there. John the Revelator says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down. The old earth is done away with. And it said new heaven and a new earth. So everything else is going to be done away with. And we're just, as I said earlier, we're just strangers, pilgrims passing through this barren land. This is not our home. But Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place for you. If it had not been so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. He, watch this. If you, okay, go over to John chapter 17. Jesus prays for himself. He prays for the apostles, the disciples, and then he turns around and prays for those to come. That's us. You can say, you have a right to say, Jesus prayed for me. He prayed for us, for those to come after them, for those to come. That's us. In God's kingdom, the hungry are fed, the sick are visited, elders are, are honored, children are, are both protected and empowered. And the dignity of all people is affirmed. Love does not mean the abandonment of justice and right, nor is it a sentimental benevolence which does not have the capacity of holy wrath. The righteousness of the kingdom is a righteousness which only God himself can give. So this morning, we are talking about one thing, the kingdom of God. This is what Christ himself talked about more than anything else, the kingdom of God. So in our text, in our text, the first thing we need to know and realize, it is God's great pleasure. This is Luke 12, which you read the verse, Luke 12 and 32. Fear not. All right. First of all, it starts off with fear not. Understanding the Bible lets us know God has not given us a spirit of fear. But a lot of times we walk in fear of what somebody said or what somebody's doing and all like that. Mm-mm. I bind it in the name of Jesus, and I loose the Lord's spirit upon that situation. In other words, I want to control that. How I control that environment or the negative thoughts, I give it over to the Lord. For instance, I'll give you a prime example. So <clears throat> when uh, the Lord called me to the ministry, and so before I came before you this morning, I prayed and asked God. I said, now, Lord, you called me to the ministry. Hi, good friend. I just noticed you. Listen, the Lord called me to the ministry back in 94. And so what frees me up? I prayed. I said, Lord, help me to decrease and allow me to increase. Work these lips of clay and give me what to say to your people. This is what I prayed for you before I got out here, right? You know I do that? 
because I put everything back on the Lord. You don't want to call me. These are your people. You know what they want. You know what they need. So I'm freeing myself up because I don't know. Bingo. Right? I don't know. But he knows everything. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows what you're thinking right now. Some of y'all thinking about the beans that's on the, on the stove at the house. <laughs> he knows your thought process. Even before you think it, he knows you're going to think it. And he knows the reason why you're here. You got to understand, we serve a God of purpose and plan. And he has a perfect plan. And his, perfect, his purpose are perfect. He knows what each and every one of us need. And he's able to touch us right at those needs. Our loved ones at those needs. Because that's the kind of God we serve. So it is God's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12 and 32. But the verse right before this, it says, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Righteousness, joy, and peace. The more I seek him, the more it comes in. Spiritual realm. Remember, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? As it is in. Remember now, Jesus came down to reveal the kingdom to us. In Matthew 6 and 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All the things prior to that scripture before, whatever that, all those are going to be added. So here's the thing. A lot of times we're trying to fix things and make it work. You know, and the Lord said, no, I'll just give it over to me. I got you. I'll handle that. But a lot of times it's hard for us to let go and let God. Because we trained ourselves for years to fix it. Duct tape only works for so, so long. So that duct tape is going to wear out. Y'all, anybody ever use duct tape outside in the sun? It ain't going to work. That's not for long. Like the NFL, it's not for long. You ain't going to be there a long time. So you have to take advantage of the opportune moments that you have to speak life. I tell people opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Every time you have an opportunity to do good, to be good, to say good, you do it and you be it. You just don't know who watching. That child. Those children are picking up on a lot of stuff that we're doing and we're saying, but we got to be examples of the kingdom. There's another song that comes to mind. I like songs. I think it's Phillips, Craig, and Dean. Lord, I want to be just like you. Cause the little boy, he wants to be just like me. Help me be a holy example for his innocent eyes to read. Help me be a living Bible, Lord, for my little boy can read. I want to be just like you because he wants to be like me. That's powerful. They're watching us. They're watching everything we do. And watch this. And as y'all know, time waits on no one. It keeps moving. There was a time where I, I couldn't wait to turn 21. I couldn't wait to be 18. I want to be like my big brother and go places and do things and get out the house. I'm a PK kid. Y'all know what a PK kid is? That's a preacher's kid. And not all of us are bad. <laughs> Some of the preacher's kids is very bad. We ain't all that bad. But, but, but I just wanted to get to a place where I can make the calls. I can leave and go when I want to go. And being a PK kid, you just can't do that. I couldn't go to the school dances. I know it. Uh. <laughs> they said you can after church. But those folks hold church a long time. Y'all know we get out, we ain't 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we good. We don't need any more. Y'all, we had church every day of the week back in the days. And as a PK kid, you slept at the church, <laughs> ate at the church, you, every, you was there the whole time. Just think about that. And now we're murmuring and complaining over a Tuesday night Bible study and Sunday night service. And don't be on the praise and worship team. Y'all have to give it another night. Are y'all with me? But a lot of things. Now, but if your God is so supreme and so great, and he's brought you to a place like this, man, you ought to serve him with full force, not knowing where he may send you next, but however, take advantage of the time that you have here. 
So Matthew 4 and 17 says, Jesus says, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now think about this. Before Jesus said that, John the Baptist said it. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus come on the scene, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He came down to show us what's going on in the kingdom of heaven. That's why he came down, so that now we can abstract from the word of God, the life of Jesus, and live out the kingdom now, the kingdom of God. Luke 17, 21, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. We are a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. He's not coming back for your body, for the body's going back to the dust from which it came. That's where it came from. It's going back. But when he breathed that spiritual breath in us, it says man became a living soul. That's what's going to heaven. However, we all are being judged by what we do with the time that we have here on earth. Now, you can't put nothing in my book and I can't put nothing in your book. What's in your book is what you put in there. Bad, the uh, the uh, movie, good, the bad and the ugly. The good, the bad and the ugly. It's, that's your book, though. But we all got to give account. But a hallelujah, you can know if you win it or not. We got to understand Jesus Christ is victorious. And if you have Christ on the inside, you're victorious too. You can believe and trust God by faith that it is so and it will be so. Come on, somebody. We got to learn how to trust God, believe God, and know God. Why? For the kingdom is within you now. Right? So the kingdom of God is the reward of good works. His righteousness is the way of piety by which we go to that kingdom. If then you consider how great is the glory of the saints, you will either through fear a punishment depart from evil. I got to get this right. You know, when I was out there living, living it up, I left mom and daddy. I can wait. I wanted to get out of Cass Grand so fast. Because I just wanted to come in, come and go when I wanted to come and go. I got tired of mom and daddy rules, so some of you teenagers, y'all, y'all that's trying to get away from mom and daddy now, be thankful. Be thankful now, because there's a whole bunch of other stuff out there, and we learn. And a lot of us in here have bumped our heads. We made mistakes. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I'm not a perfect individual, I'm a perfect being. Who is? But. Conjunction, junction, what's your funk? Y'all remember that one? <laughs> but by the grace of God, I stand before you knowing that I'm no more my own. I've been bought with a price. And the things that you hear me saying and doing, there's a change in my life. My tongue used to be slipping and cussing. Come on, somebody. But I thank God for a changed heart, a renewed mind. He says, believe on me, as the scripture have said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm no more my own. I've been bought with a price. Galatians 2 and 20, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives within me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Woo! Woo! So that's what helps us to live better, to do better, and to be better as we be continue to seek God's face. A process, a course of events whereby God begins to govern or to act as king or lord. An action, therefore, by which God manifests his being. So that's what's happening. He's manifesting. And the more he comes in, the more he comes out. And I love that feeling. The kingdom of God is a central concept in the teachings of Jesus. It refers to the reign and rule of God in heaven and on earth. It is a place of peace, love, joy, and justice. It is a place where God's will is done and his glory is revealed. God's kingdom is a realm where Jesus' authority is acknowledged and obeyed. So seek God's kingdom for it is to desire Jesus to rule, to be recognized and obeyed. Three realms which I want to uh, share with you all. Um, I'm sharing with you uh, our church, the Great Avengers Temple, vision but I'm showing you how it aligns with Calvary Chapel. Now, as I said before, listen, if you go to this church over here and they're following the B-I-B-L-E, there should be some semblance between the churches. We got to understand now, we worship the same God. There's only one spirit. 
It's not like great evangelist temple get a different spirit than Calvary Chapel. No, uh, they didn't have that work. It's the same spirit, right? So we should have some similar some similarity among ourselves in how we carry ourselves, how we walk, and how we talk. And it don't matter what shade you are. Come on, somebody. Come on. Are y'all with me? So listen. All right. So three realms, vision, model, and mission. Number one is within our own life. This is who we are. Our vision. This is our vision. Watch this. A family that will be God's living epistles, ambassadors, a church body that consists of all races and nationalities, that exhibits excuse me, love to everyone, and that everyone will experience God's love and spirit here. That's what you all are doing. The same thing we're doing over there. So I, I told him this morning when I first got here, I dropped my phone. They opened the doors for me. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? They gripped me with a smile and a hug. I'm like, oh, wow. That's the way it's supposed to be. When you go into church, it shouldn't be where you walk in, you're like, oh, Lord, what's this? You're, watch this. Your spirit, your, believe me, y'all, have anybody ever been to a place where your spirit just, it was like, something's not right here? Come on, somebody. That's the spirit letting you know. Knows what you better do. You better start praying. <laughs> Lord, help me. Protect me, Lord. Watch this. So I, 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 I dropped my phone, and they said, oh, I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, and they gave me hugs, and they welcomed me right on in. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. Now watch this. In 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God himself. Jehovah Sikkenu, the Lord of righteousness. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. That's the same God over at Great Avengers Temple as well as over here at Calvary Chapel. He's the same. And he says, and I change not. So I don't care. Now, you may go to this church and say, well, the only ones going to heaven is the ones that go into this church. The devil is a lie. <laughs> now, think about this, though. I believe this. There's going to be people from different denominations that are reading the Word of God and doing what the Word of God says. Because at the end of the day, you're governed by that. It's the word of God, not by my opinion. I tell people, look, I have no heaven or hell to place you in. Don't worship me. Worship God. Amen? Now, it goes on, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3. You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Everybody's reading us, y'all. If the saints ain't being real today, then how is there going to be light in this world of darkness? We got to light up, saints. Jesus, the light of the world, you accepted the light, you ought to light up. We ought to be light bearers, shining the light. And we living at a time where it is so desperately needed. Amen. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, not the Ten Commandments. See, the Ten Commandments. Oh, commercial break. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Slow down. Slow down, Anthony. Slow down. Listen, y'all remember God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Now, we already understand that, that Adam and Eve, they had one law and they couldn't keep it. Right. All right. Then they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You know, science is still trying to find that place. They can't find it because God ain't going to let them find it. Watch this. Kicked them out, right? So sin then is in the world, right? Then God gave them after he brought them through the Red Sea out of Egypt. Egypt represents sin. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt through the Red Sea and all these miracles and wonders going on around them. They had a cloud by day to cover their head, fire by night to keep them warm. You can't tell me there ain't no God. And then he turns around and he feeds them quail. Do you not know those people got tired of eating quail? They wanted steak. You know how picky you are with your steak. Some of y'all like it well, medium well, and, and, and don't cook it at all. But anyways, watch this. 
they were complaining. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember the story? Now, they, he brings them all the way. He's showcasing his hand. Even before they left, he gave the plagues. He's showing that I am God. Moses said, well, who do I tell him to send to me? He said, I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. Brings them across. He gives Moses. After they come across, Moses go up and talking to God, and he gave them the Ten Commandments on stone. The Ten Commandments only points to the sin, but it don't give you a way of escape out. So that's why they had a day of atonement once a year, a day of atonement where they bring their sacrifice, their blood sacrifice from an animal. And that would go on top of the mercy seat. Now, now, y'all, this is nothing strange to you because I know your pastor, Pastor Pat, spoke about this not too long ago. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, I, I can pull y'all, y'all church service up and watch too. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good too. So, but watch this. He gave him the Ten Commandments. Guess what? The people couldn't keep the Ten. Now, let's move all the way over to the New Testament. Jesus come on the scene. He says, I'm not doing away with the commandments. He says, but I came to fulfill. For what the law could not do is what I came to do. In other words, he says this. Listen. Just imagine you're out in California. You're in pure uh, Santa Monica. I guess Santa Monica, they had a pier there. And you're walking down up here, and it's a beautiful day. The sun's shining on your face. And you decide, well, it's such a good day. It's such a nice day. I'm going to take a swim in the, in the water. So, I'm, so you jump out into the water. And as you're swimming and you're floating on your back, you see a sign that says sharks in water. Now, the sign don't remove the sharks. The sign just reveal the sharks, right? The Ten Commandments only reveal you done wrong. But it never gave you a way of escape other than the day of atonement. Y'all know we walk by, we're on grace, faith, we're saved by grace, right? Now watch this. We can get forgiven anytime now. We don't have to wait until one day, right? So Jesus came to pull you up out of the water. So don't you don't get bit and ate up by the sharks. So he comes, take you out of sin, right? This, so you may live again. He says, I am the resurrection. And the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's talking about himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever what? Believeth in him, that believeth is continuation, believeth in him every day. Not just on Sunday, you won't get saved on Sunday. You won't try to get it right on Sunday. No, you get it right every day. Strive to be your best every day, all right? So, in our circle, number two, in our circle of immediate influence, this is our identity, to love. Our motto at Great Adventure Temple, a church where everybody is somebody and Christ is all in all. Y'all, y'all are just the same. Y'all are just like, watch this. Let me go on to the next one. As far around the world as we can reach, this is what we are about. So those two videos I had, as far around the world that we can reach. So you will have people that are talking about Christ around the world. Or wherever you go, Walmart, Kmart, which is closed. <laughs> Some of y'all, y'all laugh because y'all know where Kmart used to be. But anyways, wherever you go, you should be about your father's business. Our mission statement is exalt the Savior, evangelize the world, and equip the saints. You get equipped by coming to Bible study, by coming and listening to Pastor Pat or Pastor Castro, any of the other pastors, preach and teach to you because we are helpers one of another. And God placed us here for you for such a time as this. We're here for a specific assignment to help you. But we need help too. Are y'all with me with that? So that's where our friendship comes in, Pastor Castro. So we're friends. So we have a prayer war group where we pray together. We have faith alliance where we get together as leaders in our community because we believe without God, we're going to fail. But with God and us coming together, we're unified, and there's power and there's strength there. So this is what we are about, Calvary Chapel's mission. We are here to learn the word of God, grow in serving God, and proclaim the love of God. If you don't know that, that's your mission. But watch this, watch this. The first one, learn the word of God. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
You got There's something you got to do. After the pastor's finished preaching and teaching, there's stuff you got to do to help yourself, to better yourself, to be an example, right? Now, the next one, grow in serving God. 2 Peter 3.18, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Y'all see where everything's going? Everything's in line with the scripture. The last one is proclaim the love of God. This is your mission statement. Proclaim the love of God. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Remember I said, let your roots get to sink deep into the water. That's what happens in the desert, y'all. That tree is trying to find some water. And the roots go further and further down in the ground because that's stability. But that water is what we need. We're talking everlasting water. 18, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So listen, you can't proclaim what you don't have. <laughs> you cannot proclaim what you don't have. Listen to this. A.W. Tozer said, we can never know who or what we are till we know at least something of what God is. Man, we got to study. Well, how do you know about God? Go to the Old Testament. Find out all about God. You see, a lot of people, don't, they like to stick to the New Testament, but the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament being revealed. All right? So the New Testament is revealing what the Old Testament already said. You find in the Old Testament the history, the kings, the prophets, the songs, that's Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, right? So we learn a lot about God from the Old Testament, and then the New Testament is just revealing what the Old Testament was doing anyway. Do you not know God knew that he was going to have to send his son? We're not worthy. Our bloodline was stained. That's why we needed the Savior. So from our text in Romans, Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteous peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. If you were read before this, what they were saying here is, listen, some of y'all like meat. Some of y'all don't like meat. Y'all like salads, right? You won't eat anything but fish. But what it was saying in the scriptures here, listen, if I invite you over to my house and I know you are, you're a salad eater, I shouldn't put no ribs, uh, uh, slab of ribs up on the table. Are y'all with me with that? That's what, because they're, they're saying, you're not holy, I'm not holy, all of us going to hell. But watch this. If meat offends my brother, I just will not serve him meat. You know what that is? That's love. I love my brother and my sister that much that I respect them. However, that don't mean I'm going to hell or that they're going to hell. Yeah, that's, where, that's where we mess up. Well, if you ain't a vegetarian. Now, you wouldn't a vegetarian all your life. I saw you eating some meat. Sneaking the jack in the box. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They got salads. <laughs> Are y'all with me with that? So the scripture there, that's what it was talking about. It was talking about meat and drink. Think about this. Every day, y'all are preparing to eat. Think about that. All right. Quick story. I got 10 minutes, a little less than 10 minutes. Listen, so I married my college sweetheart. She's not here at this service. Hopefully she'll be at the next service, but I married my college sweetheart, and, and uh, she's Spanish. She's a Spaniard. Her mom is from Spain. She's a Spaniard, right? They call her Weta because she's real light-complected, right? So when I went to their house, their culture is that when they cook food, everyone comes to the table. Come on, somebody. Everyone comes to the table. Even if you don't eat, come to the table, right? And so, I mean, they, they eat three meals a day. And after they finish with breakfast, you hear this. <laughs> tortillas. They get tortillas for, for, for lunch. And after lunch is over, guess what? <laughs> they get tortillas for dinner, right? So uh, majority of the day, the women are in the kitchen. <laughs> No pun intended. They were sending the men out to work. They were sending them out to go work. My, my, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, they're out country. So they had one neighbor. 
So to let you know how country we are, there was an outhouse. And that just blew my mind. You, oh, 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 we use that for the bathroom? <laughs> so, but anyways, my point, my point in saying this is that they were always preparing for the next meal. And daddy was always taken care of. I went in and I was ironing my clothes. So my mother taught me how to iron. And I was ironing my clothes. Her father sent his daughter, my wife, in to iron my clothes. And I said, tell him thank you so much. But my mother taught me how to iron. And I love ironing my clothes. And I do love ironing my clothes. You can wash them. But anyway, <laughs> some of y'all caught that one. But, 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 the, but the, point, the point being is this. Here in this lesson text, it says the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. So we get caught up every day. We're getting prepared. Some of y'all wives, y'all know what I'm talking about. You can prepare for food. What are we going to eat today? Some of y'all do a list or early or Sunday night. You're doing your list for all Monday through Saturday, right? For the whole week. You're going to do this, 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 right? But he's saying it's not meat or drink. A lot of times we get caught up in the meat and drink part. Just be merry and be happy. How about your spiritual man? Your spiritual man needs spiritual food. That's the Bible. You got to eat. You got to eat. And why don't you drink from the water, the living water, Jesus Christ. So that was the focal point that he's trying to get to. That's why it says, for the kingdom of God is not me to drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. True peace and true joy are part of our new nature in Christ. In Christ, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He wants to rest, rule, and abide within you that you will live forever. He wants you to live forever. He says, I wish that no man would perish, but every man would have everlasting life. He wants you to have life, but you have to choose life. Choose this day who you're going to serve, whether man or God. But at the end of the day, you choose. And I like that. He's not making that. Look, he's not making no one serve him, but he does want you to choose. He could have made it that we just serve him. Now, we're really made to worship, but he didn't make a, he's not making us worship him. You have to choose to do that. And when you choose to worship God, you choose to live right. You choose to speak right. You choose not to go to that place. You choose not to hang out with that person that's up to no good. Are y'all with me? Now, you choose the good thing. Choose Christ. Choose Christ. Because in him, we live, move, and have our being. A believer will only walk in his God-given peace and joy in the Holy Spirit when he understands that he is righteous apart from his works. He is not righteous. Apart from him, we're not righteous. But in him, he causes us to be righteous. So we got to believe on him, as the scripture has said, and out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. And as I come to a close, I thank God for this opportune moment that we are able to fellowship together. This is a blessing, you all. Are y'all with me? This is a blessing that we're able to come together and unite together. And God loves when we come together and we're worshiping him together. We're talking about his kingdom. We ain't talking about nothing else. We're talking about him. Paul says, at all his degrees and everything that he learned, he said, I count it all as dung. Only thing that I need to know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. So at the end of the day, I just want you to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. I didn't come to give you myself. I just came to tell you about Jesus Christ and him crucified. He's helped me, this little boy from Casa Grande that was told you were not going to amount to that much. You couldn't do this or you couldn't do that. And God said, not so, son. I got you. And here's the thing. I thank God for those praying saints that pray for this little boy. That I have a change of heart and change of mind that I finally chose. See, I couldn't live off of mom and daddy. You know, I had to choose myself. And when I chose Christ, oh, my goodness. Then I'm saying, man, I should have done this a long time ago. I was raised up in a church and didn't, couldn't figure it out. Right? I sit there, I play the drums. I'm a drummer. So I would play the drum and all like this. And I thought, boy, if I can play those drums, boy, they're going to come. It ain't about you playing no drums. <laughs> they have church with or without you beating on those drums. Because it's about the relationship that we have with Christ. And now I know and I understand. And that's why I tell it. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. As the praise and worship team is coming.
Let's pray. Father God, we come to you and we thank you for this opportune moment, Father, that we're able just to come and sit at your divine table and feast for you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We know that it won't return to you void, but it shall accomplish and do that that you set it out to do. So we want to thank you right now, Father God. Touch your people from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, that they continue to say yes to your will and yes to your way. Thank you, Lord, for all the things you've already done, all the things you're going to do, and even the things that you're doing right now in our lives that we don't realize or recognize that it's you. And we'll forever give you the glory, forever give you the praise. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say amen. amen. Therefore, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God bless you.